Thank you. Thank you, Roger, for the introduction. Thank you for the invitation. Also, thank you to the organizers for inviting me to be here. I'm very happy to be here in, in Florida. Even if you think it's cold, for me it's not cold, it's good weather. Um, so, uh, I'm also uh, the editor-in-chief of Journal of Nutrition, Health and Aging, and uh, this is important here in this conference because if you have very good, nice papers in the interface of nutrition and aging, please just send me, I would be happy to, to look at that. Well, uh, I've been requested to talk about the other end of the spectrum in research. Uh, that's the clinical care, right? You have seen Roger talking about uh, cellular senescence that's basic to translational research, and now I will present a bit of clinical care and, and some uh, data that we have been collecting in Toulouse uh, for the implementation of the ICO program uh, of the, the World Health Organization and I will try to focus on, on nutritional aspects of this uh, real-life implementation in the, in the real life of the healthcare system in, in Toulouse. So just important to note, uh, our team in Toulouse is a WHO uh, co collaborating center um, and in, in this way, this, these are my um, conflicts of interest. We have been working very actively on this domain. Well, ICOP stands from the, it's a, the abbreviation of Integrated Care for Older People, uh, and this is an innovative healthcare pathway developed by WHO, and as I told before, as collaborating center of WHO, we have been uh, strongly working the conception of this model, but also in the implementation dissemination. Uh, this is a recent uh, healthcare pathway, and here you can see one of the most important publications that was done by WHO, and it's available in WHO website, and that has been published in 2019. And ICOP is innovative in the way that it allows a shift in the healthcare pathway for older adults, a shift from the traditional model that's disease-centered to a model that's more function-centered. Just to illustrate what I'm saying, in the traditional model, we will look for, for example, Alzheimer's disease, whereas in the ICOP model, we will look at cognitive function and follow the cognitive function of individuals throughout uh, the adulthood and older adulthood in order to detect small declines before these declines uh, leads to uh, dependence, and we can intervene uh, in a timely way. So the basis of the ICOP have been uh, established in, in a publication of 2015 by WHO. It's the World Report on Aging Health, and also in a, a paper published in the following year uh, in The Lancet. Uh, and we have three main concepts to keep in mind when we think about ICOP. First concept is healthy aging, because ICOP is designed to promote healthy aging. Healthy aging being the process of developing and maintaining the functional ability that ena enables well-being. Functional ability, it's, uh, this uh, concept is composed of the intrinsic capacity of the individual, the environment, and the interaction between intrinsic capacity and the environment. And very importantly, intrinsic capacity, because intrinsic capacity is in the heart of the ICOP model, Intrinsic capacity is very easy. It's all the physical and mental capacities of an individual, all internal attributes. And uh, here is the way that WHO uh, uh, suggests to operationalize um, the, the intrinsic capacity. You can see in the right side of the slide the six domains of intrinsic capacity. Um, so these are the domains that uh, WHO uh, um, suggests that they are most important to promoting healthy aging. And you can see here locomotor capacity, psychological capacity, cognition, uh, hearing, vision, and I bring your attention to a, a different, uh, let's say, domain that's the vitality domain. And why I bring your attention here? Because this is the domain that is often operationalized through uh, nutritional related variables especially weight loss and appetite loss that are common conditions in older adulthood. And the ICOP model is designed to target people 60 years and over, especially in the primary care, and it's based on a five-step healthcare pathway, as you can see here. 
we start the healthcare pathway with the screening. So the step one is the screening for deficits in intrinsic capacity. If people have a, a potential deficit in one of the domains, they enter into the healthcare pathway and go to step two, that's the in-depth assessment. Step three, the care plan, uh, personalized care plan, and so on. So the step one is an important step since this is the entrance door in the healthcare pathway for the individuals. And here you can see the tool um, that's being used uh, and disseminated by WHO to screen for deficits in intrinsic capacity. As you can see, this is composed of very simple questions or performance-based tests. For example, for mobility, Roger presented before the SPPB and one of the tests of the SPPB is used for screening for mobility limitation here. This is the chair rise test. So people are raising from the chair five times as quick as possible. And those that are unable to do or unable to do it in less than 14 seconds uh, will screen positive and will enter into the healthcare pathway. And for malnutrition, we have two simple questions about recent weight loss or appetite loss. And in Toulouse, as collaborating center of WHO, we have started the implementation of this healthcare pathway in the real life of the healthcare system since January 2020. Here you can see the, the map of France. Toulouse area is the southwestern, as indicated by the, the highlights in, in red. And the idea of implementing this um, healthcare pathway is not only uh, screening assets for intrinsic capacity deficits, but also to follow up people over time in order to detect these small declines in, in the domains of intrinsic capacity. And uh, since the very beginning, uh, in, in order to facilitate the scale up of this program, we thought that it would be important to, to have a, a digital infrastructure that would be able to receive all all this data, this large amount of data. And we have developed in collaboration with WHO uh, an app for uh, smartphones and, and tablets that's called the iCOPE monitor and also a conversational robot because sometimes older adults prefer to have kind of conversational robot they, than uh, use an app. And these tools are able to screen for the declines in, in intrinsic capacity and all the data will go directly to a database that is a secure database that respects all the laws and regulations in France for health data storage. Um, and this database is equipped with very simple algorithms that will give alerts when a person is screened positive for one of the domains of intrinsic capacity. So if the person has a potential deficit in the screening, there is an alert that is uh, triggered uh, to the healthcare provider that is caring of these individuals and then the healthcare provider can uh, do the next steps in the healthcare pathway. In, in the Department of Geriatrics in the Toulouse University Hospital, we have a dedicated multidisciplinary team only for treating all these alerts because it's a massive amount of alerts that we receive. Well, this is how the database looks like, just to show you these are not true patients, of course. Um, you have the interface, this is the interface of the healthcare professionals. You have each line is a patient and you have a color code. When you see the red color, you see that this person has screened positive, which means they, this person probably has a deficit in intrinsic capacity. You click on the color code and you go to the response of uh, all the six domains of intrinsic capacity, the response of the screening for all these domains. And you can see if the person is having a deficit in cognition or in locomotion or in psychology or in all of them. And now I will just present you a few data that you have been collecting through this system, uh, in, in trying to focus on, on the nutritional aspects of weight and, and, and appetite loss. Uh, the, main, the main publication of this initiative has been done a couple of years ago in the Lancet Health Longevity, so this is open access. If you are interested, you can uh, take a look on that. And I'm presenting here data collected between January 2020 and uh, October 2023, people 60 years and over. And important to repeat, this is real life implementation in the healthcare system. So most of these data are being collected by uh, primary care providers, especially nurses in the community. 
Well, as you can see here, we have data from more than 30,000 individuals, uh, mean age almost 77, um, most of them women, as usual, in, in older adult uh, cohorts. Um, and you can see the prevalence of the deaths of intrinsic capacity. So we have more than 20% deaths in nutritional-related uh, variables, which means 20% of the population has weight loss or appetite loss or both. You can also see that one third of the population has a locomotion uh, deficit, uh, half of the population cognitive deficit and so on. Well, we can also uh, uh, take a look on, on, on this data in a longitudinal way. So how people behave in terms of nutritional status over six months, let's say. And you can see here the incidence of the deficit in, in, in nutrition. The incidence is when people uh, don't have the problem at baseline, but will develop the problem six months after. And you can see that almost 10% of people that were uh, screening negative, they don't have the problem at baseline, will develop the problem uh, six months after. We can also play with this data and um, looking at how the nutritional status of individuals will be associated with the older domains of intrinsic capacity. And here I compare people that have only appetite loss, those with only weight loss, those with both, compared to people without any, um, any deficit on nutrition. And we can see that all of them, people with appetite loss, weight loss, and both conditions, will have an increased probability to have deficits in all of the domains of intrinsic capacity, so locomotion, cognition, psychology, and so on. And I bring your attention to the bottom of the slide because when you have both conditions, you have kind of synergetic effect. So uh, people with both conditions will have a really exponentially increased uh, likelihood to have deficits in the domains of intrinsic capacity, especially locomotion and uh, psychology. Psychology is also the domain that has the strongest associations with appetite and weight loss. If we look at this data, again, in a longitudinal way, so people that uh, did not have any problem in locomotion, cognition, and so on at baseline, but who developed an incident problem six months after, you see again that all the elements, weight loss, appetite loss, and both, are associated with an incident deficit in locomotion. And what's also interesting to see is that people with only appetite loss uh, have an increased likelihood to uh, increase the risk to develop uh, depressive symptoms in the future. And it's really interesting because uptight and, and psychology are really very connected. And yesterday you, we heard about people talking about the space and saying that it's important that the astronauts have the appetite to maintain their, their mental uh, function, their mental capacity, and, and avoid going into depressive symptoms. And this is the same thing for older adults. Since this is a conference to talk about innovative approaches, let me show you an innovative approach that our team has uh, started to develop uh, on how to look at intrinsic capacity by putting together all the domains, creating a single uh, matrix, and look how people function over the, the, the adulthood. And this paper has been published a couple of months ago in Nature Aging. So as you can see, we developed curves, uh, percentile curves uh, for men and women that are very similar to the curves that we are using to see for children when we look in weight and height. The difference is that growth curves are going up and these curves are going down because people will lose intrinsic capacity over uh, the years. And the idea that we have is that in, in a short term, we will be able to try to locate each individual in these curves to inform them and also healthcare uh, provider about where the, the, the patient is. I mean, in low level, high level, and then uh, uh, could inform uh, next steps to, to be undertaken in terms of interventions and strategies. And we think that we will be able to do that in a very short time, still in the first half of this year, 
to have this available in a website, uh, one of our websites of our studies, uh, and eventually in more long term putting this in the app in the way that when people finish the, their evaluation, they have the graph with uh, where they are located uh, with regards to people of the same age and sex. So uh, before, uh, th this data, it's important to say, to say that this data is coming from a very big initiative that we have in, in Toulouse that's called the INSPIRE program, the INSPIRE research program, that is uh, a program dedicated to investigate the biology of aging and the biology of intrinsic capacity. So how we can manipulate, as uh, Roger said before, how we can manipulate uh, bio the biology of aging in order to increase or maintain function over time. And uh, we have an, a website I can provide you with if you are interested in, uh, in the INSPIRE program uh, in which you have all the information. Well, uh, just take away uh, messages. Uh, in my personal viewpoint, there are several positive aspects with ICOP. Uh, one of these aspects is that it's fostered by WHO. So it has the potential to be implemented worldwide. Another uh, positive point is that it promotes a shift from the disease center to a function center approach. And we know those who deal with older adults that older adults are not caring about diabetes or hypertension if this is controlled. They are caring about function if they are able to walk, to, to buy groceries and doing things. And from my viewpoint as a researcher, it's interesting to shift from a dichotomy Yes, no, the person has the disease, the person doesn't have the disease, to a more continuous, so the person has a function over time and I will see when this function is uh, declining or not. And in this way, we are all shifting from late life to life course. And in what matters to this presentation, I think we, uh, through the implementation in real life of the ICO program, we uh, prove that the remote screening of the domains of uh, intrinsic capacity is feasible. I hope is feasible in real life. We have data for more than 35 people that have been screened by healthcare professionals and more than 5,000 individuals that have performed self-screening. So people are screening themselves. And this is also a tool for empowerment of older adults for them to take care of their own health. Thank you for your attention.